Hello learner, have you ever wondered about the little things made behind those big, strong, and tall buildings and constructions? All those little things are documented to make them bigger and real. Little fact, tracking your expenses, compiling important documents, organizing your photos, or even tracking your habits. If you have done any of these, then you probably already did some kind of documentation of your own. Yes, documentation is essential in creating those giant buildings and constructions. Want to dig even deeper? Sure thing, we are here to help you learn more about technical documentation. Listen till the end and enjoy while learning. Technical Documentation there are five subtopics for technical documentation. These are space planning, calculations, specifications, quantity survey and cost estimates, and the building permits. For technical documentation, technical documentation specifies and organizes the details of a project or product, including its creation or development. All pieces of information about the project or product and its development are made clear to make the data comprehensive for whatever purpose it may serve and to whom this information must be presented to. Documentation for construction projects is important since data about the plans, procedures, specifications, progress, budget, and all the relevant information are recorded. These are documents to be handled before the construction phase. What is space planning? Space planning is important in designing how the spaces are to be used or laid out while following the needs, requirements, or specifications of the client and also following existing codes and regulations. There are a few considerations in space planning. And these are the following. The privacy and security of the space, the function or intended use of the space, the space required per occupant, the quantity of the occupants, furniture use, accessibility of the spaces for persons with disabilities, size of the existing space to be utilized, environmental factors, and financial factors. Some methods in developing space plans. One method is by the use of bubble diagrams. These are roughly drawn round shapes or bubbles that are used to represent spaces such as rooms to show or provide indications of the relationships the spaces have with each other. The illustrative representations of the spaces are done through schematic design drawing and construction drawing. In schematic design drawing, it shows the floor plan with a visible representation of the rooms or spaces. Whereas, the construction drawing is the illustration of the floor plan that is more accurate, such as having the dimensions. Another method is through the use of parametric modeling. This is the creation of a digital model based on a series of pre-programmed rules or algorithms known as parameters. For example, if two squares are set to have a fixed total area, then decreasing the size of one of the squares automatically increases the size of the other, therefore maintaining the condition of having the same total area. The National Building Code of the Philippines provides requirements for buildings such as the minimum height of ceilings, the minimum sizes of the rooms, the maximum height of buildings, etc. Below is one of the sections within the code regarding airspace requirements. In section 807, also known as airspace requirements in determining the size of rooms, the minimum airspace shall be provided as follows. For a school room, minimum is 3 cubic meters with 1 square meter of floor area per person. For workshops, factories, and offices, a minimum of 12 cubic meters of airspace per person is required and for any other habitable rooms, a minimum of 14 cubic meters of air space per person is required. Calculations 
Once a preliminary design of the building or structure is finished, an analysis of the structure and the systemic components is required to ensure the functionality of the building. The analysis and calculations are done by professionals of their respective field. In structural calculations, the calculations for the structural analysis involves the usage of the principles of mechanics in dealing with loads and other conditions affecting material properties in order to ensure the safety, stability, and functionality of the building. In structural drawing, drawings must contain all the necessary information such as the size, shape, material, and provisions for connections and attachments for each member, including details, schedules, diagrams, and other related data to illustrate a material, product, or system for some portion of work. In framing systems, it is necessary to determine a proper design for the members into proportions appropriate for the safety of the structure, with the estimated loads and forces expected to be experienced by the member. For electrical calculations, the electrical design calculations of the building determine the proper power distribution system and electrical loads needed within the building. In electrical drawing, this illustrates information about lighting, wiring, power, and circuits for communication within the building. In mechanical calculations, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and transportation systems designed are calculated and created to ensure comfort in terms of heat and air quality within the building. The mechanical systems drawing shows information about heating, ventilating, and air conditioning that helps in analyzing complex systems. It is a requirement for all HVAC work and are based on the floor and reflective ceiling plans of the architect. For plumbing and sanitation calculations, the design for a plumbing system is significant for the proper water supply distribution and waste disposal within the building. Basic flow, available pressure, water supply, and pipe lengths are some of the considerations to design the system. Plumbing and sanitary drawing, equipment, pipes, pumps, and drains, the nature and size of sinks, and the location of gas are carefully illustrated in the drawing and indicates the position of sanitary piping. For water supply system, fixtures, and the process to connect every accessory. As for the code, for the calculations, guidelines from international or local codes must be considered in order to meet the requirements and standards of the structural projects. The calculations must also put into account specifications that go along with the project. Construction Specifications What is a specification? Specifications are the details for the work that explains the formation, type, building methodology and strength of the constructional work to represent its quality. Purpose of specifications. It is used for the following objectives. Number one, expressing the quality of constructional material or strength of the constructional work. Number two, expressing the ratio of components used in concrete or mortar. Number three, expressing the type of material such as timber type, and bricks type, etc. Number four, expressing the color of construction or materials. Number five, listing the conditions of the contract. Number six, evaluating the cost likely to be expended over the constructional work. Number seven, explaining the methodology for conducting constructional work. And number eight, explaining the machinery and tools used in the constructional work. Principles of Writing Specifications Specifications play a vital role in contracts and it has a legal value. Therefore, it should be clear and self-explanatory. Language for specifications should be such that no chance of ambiguity left. Specifications determine the quality of construction work. Sometimes, if hindi na-explain specifications ng maigi, pwedeng may magreklamo. Therefore, the following principles must be observed while writing a specification. The first principle is the description of the material. 
It describes complete description of constructional material, types of materials and size, ratio of each component in concrete or mortar, and methodology of mixing. In this principle, you will going to describe the materials used. For example, if a working drawing shows a plaster wall, the specifications should include the description of a plaster mix, last, paper backing, and finishing techniques. The second principle is the workmanship. It describes method of work, different steps of the work, surface preparation, surface compaction, and method of curing, etc. It includes the procedure or the methodology of the work. Examples, the standards used from ASTM is Lash Aashto, na naleso na sa construction materials and testing natin na subject. The third principle is the tools and plants. It describes whether it will either be organized by the contractor or by concerned department of the government. This must also be described in writing specifications in the order they can be organized before commencing the construction project. Number 4. Protection of new work. It includes protection of digging, means to dig or break up and move earth with a tool or machine, ruling, masonry, concrete work, and plastering, means to cover a wall or ceiling with plaster, and etc. Number 5 is the expression. Use small and complete sentences, language with accurate grammar in order to understand it well and avoid incomplete and complex words. Kailangan simple lang ang specifications natin. Di naman kailangan ng bonggang-bonggang mga words. Number 6 is the clause of specifications. Must neither confer each other nor repeated. Should also be written in ascending order. In short, follow the construction schedule. For example, clauses related to excavation should come before foundation or footing. Alang naman unahin ang paglagay ng foundation bago mag-excavate. Kung baga, nagpapakita ng ascending order. Types of specification First type is the general specification, also known as brief specifications, used to show aspect, standard, type of constructional work used to establish the standard of the construction work that will help in establishing a detailed estimate. The second type is the detailed specification. Shows a detailed description, characteristics, quantity, ratio, and formation method of the material used in construction work. Ang detailed specification ay may two types, standard specifications, written down and published in departments of engineering, published in the form of books and generals. Special specifications not officially written and published in standard specifications are written by the in-charge engineer of the constructional project. So, ang pinagkaiba lang ng two types is that ang detailed specification is mas detalyado, mas inexplain, unlike sa general specification. Quantity Survey Quantity survey is essential in estimation and construction of any project. This aids in determining the costs and materials needed in order to properly allocate funds for a certain project. Moreover, this is also generally known as estimating. Before commencing a project, kailangan munang alamin, of course, ang cost and quantity of materials needed. So, tandaan natin na ang concept ng quantity survey is having knowledge to determine the entire cost and quantity of the materials. Kung meron tayong quantity survey, of course, dapat meron tayo ng surveyor. Kaya siya ay tinatawag na quantity surveyor. Is the person who estimates and also known as evaluator or estimator. One should be skilled in understanding and reading the drawings. Data for estimate. Drawings, specifications, and rates are needed para makapag-estimate tayo. Estimate is prepared according to the sizes of every component of the project which are depicted in drawings. Drawings show heights, lengths, and thicknesses of different parts of the project. Some of the common forms of drawings prepared in the process of building estimation are plan, 
elevation and sectional elevation. Ito po ay all about sa drawings. For specifications naman, specifications are appointed along with drawings for the depiction of the project quality. So we have here the two types of specifications na na-discuss na kanina, the general specification and the detailed specification. The rates. Rates of material or constructional work can be determined from a schedule of rates of different public and private departments or from analyzing completed constructional work. Some rates are material charges, carriage charges or carriage charges, and labor charges. Rates can also give us an accurate estimation. This must rely on reality. Types of estimate. Original estimate is the estimate prepared for a newly proposed project. So, ang original estimate ay merong two ways, the rough cost estimate and the detailed estimate. So, rough cost estimate po, this is done for any project before commencing about its fruitfulness and cost that will be expended on it. At saka sometimes, makukuha din po natin ang rough cost estimate by comparing cost expended over former project experiments and undergoing proposed project. Tapos, under din po nito, meron din po tayong contingencies na tinatawag. These are the additional charges that have to be made on urgent basis during a project and it cannot be predicted. Tapos, it is conducted in different manner for different types of projects. For example, sa buildings, pwede natin gawin ang per unit number, plint area basis, cube rate estimate, and per unit length of wall. So, per unit number, the cost estimate is done per unit number according to aspect of project. This method will take account of per student's cost in case of a school construction, per bed in case of a hospital, and per seat in case of cinema. Per unit rate is established respecting factors such as materials and labor. Ang print area basis naman ay tinatawag ding square meter method. This is an often used method wherein the entire proposed constructing area and cost of the building is determined with the expenses such as water supply and sanitary electrification and gas supply. Cube rate estimate. The cube rate estimate talks about the volume. So the overall cost of the building is equal to the total volume of the proposed building multiplied to the rate per unit volume. So, ang volume of the building is the outer measurement of buildings such as length, height, and width. Kung naaalala natin, yung volume po ng rectangular prism is equals to length times width times height. Ang rate per unit volume naman po is the type of the building and related specifications. Last one is the per unit length of the wall. Lengths of different walls are found separately. Then, cost of unit length of each wall is determined. This cost is determined separately for foundation and superstructure. Foundation includes cost of damp roof course, na yun po ang barrier designed to prevent the moisture rising through the structure, and then the cost of digging, filling, and etc. Ang superstructure naman po includes cost of masonry, wood crafting, roofing, and finishing, etc. Letter B, Detailed Estimate. Each item of the project is determined and multiplied with its unit of rate to acquire the cost. Considered a better estimation method, the following data is included in this type of estimate, the project report, specifications, detailed drawing, design data, and rates. Detailed estimate is also prepared for other purposes. Number 1 for the revised estimate. It is prepared if changes are made in project design of the already prepared revised estimate or if there are changes due to fluctuation of prices. It is accompanied with comparative statement that clarify the price fluctuation in each item. Number 2, the supplementary estimate. If construction is started and changes in design are felt and expenditure cannot be covered with approved funds, then additional estimate is prepared, which is called supplementary estimate. Number three, the revised and supplementary estimate. 
it happens if estimate shows the involvement of additional cost more than 5% before commencing or during construction of project, then it is needed to prepare one estimate for project from scratch and acquire new technical sanction for the project. This is called the revised and supplementary estimate. Repair estimate. Estimate is prepared to find the cost applying over the repair and maintenance done in buildings and other structures. So here are the types of repair estimate. Letter A, the annual repair estimate. Buildings and other structures are repaired every year to keep them maintained and usable. So from the word annual means once a year. So every year po ito. Tapos, may sinasabi po dito na 1 to 1.5% budget of overall cost is kept for this purpose. So, ang example po na nag-undergo ng annual repair ay ang mga roads, edges, and shoulders. Kailangan i-repair o i-maintain every year. So, letter B is the quadrennial repair estimate. So, from the word quad meaning 4. Kaya, special repair is done after every 4 years. So, it includes painting and repairing of spilled plaster and includes repair of doors and windows. So, yun po yung mga examples. Tapos, ang last is the special estimation, repairing of damages of buildings and other structures caused by earthquake, flood, and other accidents is done in special repair. Let's proceed to the building permit. It is an official approval issued by the local government agency that allows you or your contractor to proceed with a construction or remodeling project on your property. It is intended to ensure that the project plans to comply with local standards for land use, zoning, and construction. So these are the specific issues that the building permit process may address. Structural integrity of the framing work, zoning, sanitation, water and sewer lines, fire protection, and electrical services. So, ang building permit po ay importante kasi bago tayo mag-proceed sa pag-construct, pag-repair, pag-renovate, etc., kailangan ng building permit. You are not allowed if walang building permit. Kung baga, ito yung ticket natin to construct a building. Hindi porket engineers na tayo o kaya nakapasa na tayo sa board exams, ay magkoconstruct na tayo ng building sa kung saan-saan lang natin gusto without permission. Kaya we need building permit po. The National Building Code of the Philippines indicates building permits as a requirement for any activities for buildings. Section 301, Building Permits. No person, firm, or corporation, including any agency or instrumentality of the government, shall erect, construct, alter, repair, move, convert, or demolish any building or structure or cause the same to be done without first obtaining a building permit. Therefore, from the building official assigned in the place where the subject building is located or the building work is to be done. So, is it important? Yes. It lays out the critical rules and regulations that must be followed by everyone involved in the construction or renovation process. So, ito na po yung sinasabi ko kanina na kailangan ng building permit bago mag-construct. Structural or non-structural, it matters. Permits are not needed for non-structural projects. However, if there is an important change in the aesthetic of the structure, permit will be required. Section 302, Application for Permits. The applicant shall file an application, therefore, in writing and on the prescribed form from the office of the building official. Every application shall provide at least the following information. Number 1. A description of the work to be covered by the permit applied for. Number 2. Certified true copy of the TCT covering the lot on which the proposed work is to be done. If the applicant is not the registered owner, in addition to the TCT, a copy of the contract of lease shall be submitted. Number three, the use of occupancy for which the proposal work is intended. And number four, estimated cost of the proposed work. Section 303, Processing of Building Permits. 
the processing of building permits shall be under the overall administrative control and supervision of the building official and his technical staff of qualified professionals. In processing an application for a building permit, the building official shall see to it that the applicant satisfies and conforms with approved standard requirements on zonings and land use, lines and grades, structural design, sanitary and sewerage, environmental health, electrical and mechanical safety, as well as with other rules and regulations promulgated in accordance with the provisions of this code. Section 304, Issuance of Building Permits When satisfied that the work described in an application for building permit and the plans and specifications submitted therewith conform to the requirements of this code and other pertinent rules and regulations, the building official shall, within 15 days from payment of the required fees by the applicant, issue the building permit applied for. The building official may issue a permit for the construction of only a part of portion of a building or structure whenever the plans and specifications submitted together with the application do not cover the entire building or structure. Approved plans and specifications shall not be changed, modified, or altered without the approval of the building official and the work shall be done strictly in accordance thereto. Approved plans and specifications shall not be changed, modified, or altered without the approval of the building official and the work shall be done strictly in accordance thereto. Section 305. Validity of Building Permits The issuance of a building permit shall not be construed as an approval or authorization to the permittee to disregard or violate any of the provisions of this code. Whenever the issuance of a permit is based on approved plans and specifications, which are subsequently found effective, the building official is not precluded from requiring permittee to effect the necessary corrections in said plans and specifications or from preventing or ordering the stoppage of any or all building operations being carried on there under, which are in violation of this code. A building permit issued under the provisions of this code shall expire and become null and void if the building or work authorized therein is not commenced within a period of one year from the date of such permit or if the building or work so authorized is suspended or abandoned at any time after it has been commenced for a period of 120 days. Section 306 Non-issue ones, suspension or revocation of building permits the building official may order or cause the non-issuance, suspension, or revocation of building permits on any or all of the following reasons or grounds. Letter A. Errors found in the plans and specifications. Letter B. Incorrect or inaccurate data or information supplied. Letter C. Non-compliance with the provisions of this code or of any rule or regulation. Notice of non-insurance suspension or revocation of building permits shall always be made in writing, stating the reason or grounds therefor. Section 307 Appeal Within 15 days from the date of receipt of advice of the non-issuance, suspensions or revocation of permits, the applicant or permittee may file an appeal with the secretary who shall render his decision within 15 days from date of receipt of notice of appeal. The decision of the secretary shall be final subject only to review by the office of the president. To Engineer Banyares and to our classmates, thank you po for listening. I hope may nalaman po tayong lahat mula po dito sa report namin na technical documentation. So if ever po na may tanong kayo, don't worry, meron po kami isi-send sa inyong handouts. And if ever din po ulit na may gusto talaga kayong itanong, you are free po to comment here in our video presentation. So thank you so much po at saka God bless and mag-ingat po tayong lahat.